Hi everybody and welcome to another video brought to you by plcgurus.net. So you're following along in our Control Logics PID Essentials video series and we are now in what is the eighth installment in that series. So if you haven't watched the preceding videos, I do highly recommend that you go ahead and do that before watching this one. Each video we've done in this series really builds on the previous one to get us to the point we're at now, which is basically uh, all of the loop control instructions. And we've explained a lot of what these instructions do and what these different tags, the function of these different tags are. And we've built in all of the supporting loop auxiliary control routines that are going to be necessary in order to control our, our model, our process here, which is going to be a temperature process that we are using steam to control. And we've also gone ahead and tested the, the functionality of the PID sim panel, which I'll include a link so you can go ahead and download that this HMI panel so you can model this entire process exactly the way I'm doing it here in this video now for you. So I'll include a link to that download um, that, that download file and you can go ahead and watch through the series and be exactly the way we're doing it now. Okay, so what we wanted to do in this video is go ahead and now set up the PIDE instruction itself. So the first thing you want to do is head on over to this little ellipsis here and if you hover over it, it'll tell you to view block properties. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And so what this brings up is a dialog box with a series of um, text field entries and radio buttons that will allow you to configure all of the parameters or a good number of the parameters that are listed in the complete parameter list here. Okay, like I said, we are only going to be making use of a small subset of these and there are many, many parameters in here that are going to be outside the scope of what we're doing here today, which is modeling essentially what is a first order uh, temperature control plant. Okay, so what I want to do right now is confirm that all of the different actions and things are configured. So we are set up for periodic timing mode, which is correct, which is what we want. Remember the periodic timing mode will use the the periodic tasks update rate as the update time for the loop so we want to go ahead and keep that remember we set that for i believe 100 milliseconds over here and we are a reverse acting process so we want to make sure that we have the correct controller action selected here uh, namely that our error is going to be computed as our set point minus our pv coming back or a process variable variable or process value value coming back and we're going to calculate using the error and the derivative term is going to use the the process variable that's fine and notice the gains here so right now all of the gains are zeroed out okay let's go ahead and just leave that the way it is for now uh, we're going to come back and set up some gains and what i want to do initially to get the ball rolling here is just arbitrarily pick some gains we're gonna set up a trend, and then we're gonna go ahead and try to manually tune our loop by looking at the actual dynamic response curves in our trend. So that's kind of where we're going right now. So I'm gonna leave the rest of this, and remember, if you go back to video number one in this series, remember we talked about the independent or dependent form equation, okay? So which one were we using, do you remember? Right, we wanna make sure the dependent radio button is selected here because we are going to be using a c common controller gain kc which in effect is the proportional component so if you if you can't remember back to that series it was quite a few videos ago i do recommend at this point now that you go back to video number one and watch it okay all right so i'm just going to click apply there i think everything else is the way we want it for now anyhow and I want to direct your attention now to the EU, the engineering unit slash limits tab here. So this is where we want to configure some of these limits and parameters. All right. So for the PV, so these are our engineering unit scaling. Okay. So remember I said we have something here called CVEU, which we are not using, but we are going to look at the actual readout here just to give us an idea of where we're at. Uh, when we're reading back the loop, and that'll make sense in a little bit. Instead, we've opted to use the unscaled CV value, and then actually, I'm just going to move this over here, maybe, for now. 
and actually run that through a, a scaling instruction. Now, again, you don't have to do this. I'm only doing this so you can see how it looks. We get to you know look at another instruction in the process, but this will effectively do what we're gonna do here, okay? All right, it is what it is. Here we go. So for our max at 100% span, we're going to say PV max is going to be 150 degrees C. Okay. And our minimum, we're going to leave right at zero. So now remember what we said here for the CV, the engine, the scaled CV. So remember what we said here. So we said we have the heat capacity to heat this thing between 75 and 120 degrees C. So barring any external temperature disturbance that we have down here. So it would follow then our minimum at a 0% output is going to be 75 degrees C. So let's go ahead and enter 75 here. And our maximum at 100% is going to be 120. So now we want to set up our set point limits. So this is just a hard limit that we can set up in the PID instruction itself in order to control where these limits can go, the min and max that these limits can go, even though we're actually controlling the set point uh, externally via this tag. Uh, if it deviates outside of the limits we set in here, an alarm will be set. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that to, we're gonna say, let's make the low limit, I don't know, 70. And we'll make the high limit, well, we'll just make the high limit 120. That's the maximum we can heat to. So let's just go ahead and make it 120. All right, now the CV limits. So again, this is now corresponding to the CV output. We're gonna say that the limits on that, we wanna be able to be fully open, fully closed. So zero and 100%. So we're gonna go ahead and leave those there, okay? So. For the rest of it, I think we're going to ignore for now. I mean, we could set up all the PV uh, high, 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 low limits. We're not going to go there. I mean, we're going to just look at the, the, the process and the dynamic response of this process, um, namely. But you, you could go ahead and set these limits up, and then you can use those data tags um, for alarm enunciation. Okay? And then the auto-tune, we're going to leave that alone for now as well. Uh, we'll get to an auto-tuning video probably uh, at the very end of this series. We're going to do a bunch of things before we, we, we let the controller do the auto-tuning for us. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and click apply here uh, just to save some of those changes. And what I want to do now, you know what, let's just go ahead and put some values in here. So I'm just going to pick some arbitrary values that I know are going to cause our loop to go into instability. That's what I want to do first. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and saturate this proportional and put a value of 30 in there. I'm gonna put a value initially uh, uh, in the integral of, I don't know, point zero zero one, And we'll leave the derivative alone. We're gonna implement this as a PI or P plus I only controller. Okay, so let's just go ahead and set those up and we're gonna click okay. So the other thing I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and head on over to the scaling instruction. So remember, we're going to actually scale this thing externally versus using the, the engineering units or the already scaled now CV output. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this ellipsis now. And you can see here, we have four parameters that we're interested in here. So we have the input raw max, we have the input raw min. And what do you think this is going to be? So our input raw max is going to cor correspond to our CV output max, which is 100%, okay? Now the input raw min, again, is zero because we wanna be able to range this thing between fully open and fully closed, this valve. And now we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate essentially what we did in the PID instruction itself. So this will be 120 and this will be 75. And, you know, this will be an interesting exercise just to see that this is actually is, in fact, going to yield the same output that CVEU does. So this is why I kind of wanted to do it, just to show you that this is exactly what is happening. Okay, I'm going to click OK. And you know what? I think that's it for now. 
So we've got our, our, our PID instruction, our PIDE instruction now parameterized the way we want to get started. Uh, we have the scaling instruction set up. We've got all of the other uh, instructions set up in our loop or feedback loop here. I think we're getting really, really close. So in the next video, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and send up, set up a trend so that we can actually model the dynamic response curves. Okay, so the, before we leave, let's go ahead and do a save. So I'm just going to go ahead and file save as. I'm actually going to save this as part eight. And we'll click save. And I think we're good to go. So stay with me. We're, we're just about there. We got another video uh, to get going to set up our trend. And then we're going to turn this thing on and see what happens. So I hope you found this video informative. And thank you for watching.